I just want to really quickly call your attention to the fact that we've been doing this and actually kept at it for over a month now. So, like, go us. Last week, everyone talked a little bit about change, and then on Friday, Hank's Vlogbrothers video was also partially about change, and he said a lot of the same things that Gail did in her video, so that was kind of neat. It's the beginning of a new week, and I know I'm supposed to introduce new subjects and all of that, but change is kind of a big thing for those of us that choose to go abroad, and with Rhiannon's birthday having been on Friday, and a few more coming up, we seem to have quite a few spring babies in this group. I feel like I can get away with forcing us to fixate on this topic for just a tiny bit. One of the big things that keeps coming up is this question of anticipation, and whether you respond to change by trying to hold things in place or expedite the process of change. I definitely fall into the latter camp. I tend to change my hair as a response to this feeling that change is not happening fast enough. I think that some part of my subconscious believes that if my hair is different, then my life will magically follow suit and change as well, as if I am just some sort of passive observer to the changes in my life. In general, I am very pro-change. I get really excited about it. For me, the fact that change is coming is usually more exciting than the aftermath. I love the process of change, the constant motion of it all. As Gael said, the fact that you don't really know what to expect. That is what I love most about change. The afterward, the part where you settle into these new and beautiful things, is a little bit more difficult for me. That's the part where I have to be a little bit more deliberate and proactive in trying to appreciate the here and now, or else I start to feel kind of suffocated, I guess, by the sameness of things. Now, for example, I'm a little bit overwhelmed by everything with school, midterms just happened, and now I have to start getting serious about my final research papers and figuring out what I'm going to do as soon as coursework ends, and all of this makes me realize just how soon my time in Paris is going to come to an end. So there's a lot of the go, go, go stuff that I get so excited about. On top of that, I have a birthday coming up, so that brings with it all of the weird, like, age-obsessed stuff. I am one of the younger people in my MA program, so it's not really that bad, but being the oldest person in this little group is kind of weird to, to back and forth. I realized the other day that my little sister is almost an adult, and that kind of terrifies me because I do not feel like I am anywhere near this concept of adulthood. And really, though, like, what is that even supposed to be? I think I gave myself all these weird metrics for what adult was supposed to be and look like, namely a sense of stability, and I have not achieved it, this adult thing. I have massive student debt, I don't know what I want to do with my life, and I'm definitely not anywhere near financial stability or geographic stability for that matter. But the thing is that outside of this weird sense of what I've told myself it means to be an adult, I don't actually crave or want stability. I spent the first half of this video rambling about my love of constant change. I think I just equated that part of my personality with this idea of non-adulthood and that someday I would just grow out of it and become this radically different person who, I don't know, sounds kind of boring, actually. Lately, I have been realizing just how ridiculous that is. <laughs> I've been coming to terms with the fact that I am never really going to have everything figured out. That sounds like a really silly and obvious thing to say, but saying it and meaning it are two very different things. I guess I'm now coming to the point where I can say it, mean it, and be okay with it. On a less, oh my god, who am I, what is my life note, my brother is coming to visit me for my birthday. I am seriously looking forward to all sorts of fun adventures in the days ahead. He has also been abroad actually in Afghanistan for the last year, so Paris is going to be a little bit weird for him now, I imagine. For me, this is the part of travel that I struggle with the most, being away from my family. I am incredibly close with my siblings. I constantly have these moments where I wish that one or all of them were here because I just come across something that leaves me thinking, oh my gosh, they would love this thing that I just saw that just happened. But maybe that's kind of how we get to have them with us? I don't know if that actually makes any sense. Brittany, I'm not really sure what my question for you is, since this was mostly a reply to the conversation that you started last week. So I guess we can talk about family this week. Do you think it'll be hard to be away from them? And is there anything in particular that you're doing to prepare yourself for that? That's it. <laughs> Brittany, I will see you tomorrow. Happy birthday, Rhiannon.